What up, what up, what up, what up? Yo, yo, yo. It's your boy, Cedric from the Glide Live. I hope everyone is having an amazing, amazing, amazing week. I hope you spend time with loved ones, family, friends. But more importantly, not, I say this because I genuinely mean this. I hope you're spending time with you. You're so important and you're worth it. So I hope you're actually making sure you make time for yourself. Boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Do I have a topic for you? What I want to talk to you about today is how I learned to stop living from a place of hurt. Ooh. You ever hear the story, hurt people hurt? Yeah. Funny thing is, half the times, I didn't even realize that I was actually hurt or that I was hurting anyone because I was so lost and so disconnected from me that I didn't know what I was doing. It's interesting when people always say, well, you know, I don't know why he does that. He should just change. And the reality is, is we never really understand. That pain is so deeply buried but more importantly, we've created a, a, a way that we live our life to cope so that we don't feel that pain. So that we don't even understand that we are living from a place of hurt. True story. One of the things that I did that hurt a lot of people is I hated being by myself. I guess, it's not even I guess, I know. I didn't like my own company. And I would, when I wanted to use, I didn't like to keep numbers. I didn't always use with the same people. It's just sometimes fortunate. But I would go cruise the streets. I would go to like 7-Elevens and I just approach random people. Hey, yo, can you get me some, I didn't use the word stuff, I used a different word. You party? And that was a signal, was like, hey, yo, are you down to go get some drugs, come home and have sex? These are people who, they're down and out on their luck. They could be homeless or and they could be in their addiction. And I was taking advantage of that. And not justifying, excusing my action. But when it was happening, I wasn't even looking at it that way. At all. I was like, oh, I just want to go have some fun. You know, I want someone to come home and to have fun with me. Hurt people hurt. I lived that life for so long. I mean, when I split up with, I'm my last ex, but this is when I went on this major run, 2014, I mean, literally my ex walked out the door and this was the days where you can actually go online and you can say, hey, who wants to come over to my house and party? And when you say party with a capital T, they know that it's drugs and sex. And I mean, literally he walked out the door and I actually did that within a day because I was so devastated. I didn't want to feel, I wanted to be numb. I never understood that that was what I was doing. I would actually say, 
on my head. I hope that I find somebody and we can fix each other. You know, we could actually fall in love. Well, one day, I had someone tell me. And he said, bro, you know you're chasing sex and not love. And it starts to dawn on me. What are you doing, Cedric? How are you going to find Mr. Right when you're looking for Mr. Right now? When you finally realize that all you're doing is putting bad energy out there, it all starts to come back to you. I was in this vicious cycle. I can't take all of the credit of how I stopped living from hurt because one of the biggest, I don't want to say people, thing that never left my side, never judged me, was trying to encourage me to let me know that there was people out here and that he also loved me was God. It sounds cliche, but it's the truth. I used to look and say, they're like, oh, turn your life over to God. God's going to help you. And I was like, okay, God, here, I want help. Help me. But it never came. But what I had to do was to, to, from a place of sincerity and a place of understanding what's hurting. When I finally broke down and begged God, crying, I don't want to live like this anymore. I don't want to be disconnected from myself. Please, oh please, oh please. Will you show me how to heal? That desperation. Things slowly start to change. Now, this is kind of controversial for some people, but I have to live my truth and how I know that God speaks to me. I was sitting in my apartment. I don't think I had relapsed at this time, but still going through struggles. Woke up and I told the story once already. Watching Will and Grace, 1 a.m. in the morning. And at the end of the show, Will gets his happily ever after. He gets his husband. He gets his, his surrogates having a baby. Two things that I'm dying to have. I was dying to have. And I shouted at the TV and switched it off and said, this is why I don't watch TV. Because you do not get your happily ever after in this life. I switched it off. And the power in my house went off three times right afterwards. On, off, on, off, on, off. I knew God saying to me, said, I got you. I need you to do the work. All that you want, I'll give to you. But right now, I need you to fix you. That's God reaching his hand out to me, telling me, I got you, my son. I'm gonna help you. 
But he doesn't just help you snap his fingers. I also had to do the work. And the work's not easy. I went to rehab, did IOP, I even tried to do the 12 steps. You have to find what works for you. That did not work for me. But what did work for me is reading, understanding where this pain was coming from. Knowing that I am looking for a reason not to feel this hole, this void, this pain inside who's broken my heart, who's made me feel not worthy. I had to face those demons. And when I started to face them, and then I asked God to take those pain away from me, and I grieved them, and I started to feel better. And the more I do that work, the less pain I actually have here. So how I live my life now is I live my life from my heart. Your mind, battlefield is gonna send you so many things that are not true. But when you learn to quiet down the mind so that you can hear what your heart is telling you and you live from this place, that's when I was no longer living from hurt. I was living for my soul. And what an amazing feeling it is. Every day I say to God, I'm submit myself to you. Please guide my steps. Do you know I meet people who I'm supposed to meet constantly to give me a reminder, keep going. You're on the right path. That's how I know I'm living from my heart. I'll pray and I'll open up the Bible and I'll read a scripture that will answer the prayer of what I'll just ask God to about. I live from my heart and from my soul now. And I know that God's in control. And because I live that way, I no longer live from hurt. I live from a place of happiness gratitude and inner peace and let me tell you I will not trade this inner peace for anything now and I feel good this smile this glow that I have on my face it's real it's very real because I finally made it to the other side. So guess what? I'm closer, closer. I can't even probably say I'm living my glad life. Because guess what? My life now, it may not look perfect, but it's my life and I'm happy. And that's all I ever want. So, I hope you learned something from this. You've been on this journey. You've seen from where I was over a year ago to where I am now. And by God, I'm there. I'm living my glad life. So thank you for being part of this journey. Doesn't mean these videos are gonna stop, but guess what? I'm where I'm supposed to be. And I hope that these videos have inspired anyone to be able to take that journey to get there. Bad life. Thanks for watching. I love you, I love you, I love you. If there's any topic that you want me to talk about that I've actually, you feel that I may be overcome, please, please, please put it in the comments. Continue to watch my videos, like and subscribe, and share this with anyone you feel that may benefit from this. God bless, and I love you.